Welcome to Fueled by Death Show. Hey, it's not just a podcast anymore. Get ready, the show's about to begin. Hello. Hi. Internet. The Hopefully. interwebs. The interwebs. Hopefully you can see and hear us all right. It's been a minute since we've actually done this. True. Normally. Normal. Yeah. Um, if you guys missed the madness that was our Halloween party last week, uh, that is still up wherever this is found on YouTube. And actually, I think Twitch took it down. But um, uh, it's over on Facebook and on YouTube as well. Uh, that was crazy. Crazy a, fun. Do you have a favorite memory from our Halloween party? Oh, the... What do we make? Floam? Foam? <laughs> the blob. The blob. <laughs> Making the blob. The blob. Mine actually worked. <laughs> the blob was pretty fun. My favorite memory is, is everybody trying to be a mummy. That was pretty funny, too. I didn't participate in that because I was too hot. It was really <laughs> sweaty in here, and that it cat really makeup is. was literally dripping off my face. Yeah, yeah. It gets it gets pretty hot in the studio. We have two giant lights right here that give off a lot of heat. Um, but as we get into the winter months, that'll be nice. Yeah. Eh. 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 Well, if you guys are just joining the show for the first time, I am the Incredible Jeff. I am the mother of content. And we're so happy that you guys are here. If you're watching us on Facebook or over on Twitch or over on YouTube, hello, hello, hello. Hello. (laughs) What we do (laughs) every single show is give away something cool. We do. We do. And this week we're giving away what you see in front of you. The Dos Horn. The Dos Horn. Hey! We're giving one away on Facebook, one away on Twitch, and both of those winners will be announced after we sign off. And then one winner on YouTube will be announced right before we sign off. We'll announce your name live. And all you got to do is join in the conversation, drop a comment in those comments that we see before us. We'll try to interact with you as we go. And one lucky comment on each platform will win a DOS horn. And you might be sitting at home going, What's a DOS horn? (laughs) Is a DOS horn? Well, that was the censored version. Yeah, okay. The uncensored version is, What the fuck is a DOS horn? And I got an answer for you with a very fun video that I made when we actually released this product a couple years ago. And here's that. Hang upright around your neck for full beverage enjoyment. Looking good, Sierra. Dave doesn't hold on to Dos Horn when putting it on. Now it's upside down and everywhere. The 12 ounce ceramic mug can be used for hot beverages such as delicious Death Wish coffee. Use the included leather sleeve for protection. The horn can be used for 15 ounces of your favorite cold drink. The Dos Horn should be used for liquids, but Dave has filled it with popcorn. That's actually a good idea, Dave. Firmly grip both parts and separate. Make sure seal is closed when reattaching. Great job, Sierra. Dave isn't careful and ends up spilling his beverage. He doesn't make sure the two pieces fit and the rest of his drink is a goner. Use the included display stand to exhibit the DOS horn proudly on your desk or mantle. Not using the display stand could damage the horn and spill your beverage. Use the stand, Dave. You are now a master of the horn. So fill it with your favorite beverages. Rejoice in the power of Das Horn. Rejoice in the power of the horn. That wasn't much rejoicing. (laughs) Um, As you can see, it comes in that awesome box, which I'm just going to get out of the way right now. And this is it right here. It uh, it comes with this glory. The only thing that you don't see is the um, uh, lanyard uh, holder that it comes with as well with a nice leather sleeve, which is really cool. But, yeah, I mean, you know, the horn itself is plastic. It's just a fun thing to have, like, especially if you like, like to be Viking. a Viking. Exactly. But, um, and, again, you don't want to put hot beverages in this because, again, it's just plastic. It's going to get hot. But this is great. This is a ceramic mug with a beautiful top on it and a dishwasher safe. Um, and, I mean, just this by itself is a cool little collector's piece. And they're available on DeathWishCoffee.com. 
Jesse says that the horn doubles as an eye poker for people that won't get away from my desk. I like that idea. <laughs> I'm, I'm never going near Shannon's desk again. Um, Be warned. <laughs> But yeah, so one lucky winner on Facebook, on Twitch, and on YouTube will win a DOS horn tonight from us here at Fueled by Deathcast. And we're really excited that you guys are all with us as well. Everything we do here would be nothing without the voice of death himself, Mr. Brock Powell. Yay, Brock! We love Brock Powell. Um, Brock has been really busy lately. In fact, I just shared a video over on the Fueled by Deathcast um, Facebook page, if you guys missed it. Him and his friends uh, created a very funny um, gym video. Did you watch it? I did. Did you see the voice of death in there? Yes, I Make did. Make a rare on-camera appearance. It's very funny. Um, and I encourage you guys all to go check that out because it's going to be episodic. There's going to be multiple episodes of that crazy gym. Very nice. <laughs> yeah. But we love Brock to death. And uh, we love all you. And for being a fan of Fueled by Deathcast and everything that we do here, you guys get a special discount code, and I couldn't t- I don't even know what it is. Yeah, okay, screw you. <laughs> it is the- Bam! <laughs> He's like, I almost forgot my own code. <laughs> Use the code Mother of Content for 12% off your order from DeathWitchCoffee.com. You get yourself a Das Horn if you don't win one tonight. You can get yourself some merch that's coming out tomorrow on the new Blankie. You haven't gotten a Blankie yet? Yeah, I, it's not a Blankie. It's, it's a, a blankie. Blanket. It's a we're all blanket. adults here, no, we're and we love okay. <laughs> we love Deathwish Coffee and our adult loving Deathwish Coffee. So we get blankets from Deathwish. Jeff Coffee. is playing with toys under the Christmas tree. That's You're true. not an adult. It's true. I'm not. I'm, I'm. Anyway, use my code. Yes, Mother of Content, twelve percent off anything you see on DeathwishCoffee.com. Dot org. And dot org. <laughs> we should get a dot org. Um, <laughs> I got to say, uh, I am really excited to be back doing the show just like this. It was a lot of fun doing it last week, but it was a lot of stress, too. A lot I'm of sweat. So glad that you guys uh, tuned in for that. But um, like normal, we got a lot of normal stuff to get to tonight, but it's all exciting. Uh, at the end of the show, at the update, we're going to show you all the new products that are coming out in November. Ooh. If you're not getting the scoop Every single Monday, you got to get on that because we already announced most of these products, but you're going to see them live tonight, and we're going to talk about them and answer some of your questions. Also, you're going to get to meet um, the Death Star of the Week this week and also get a sneak peek of tomorrow's podcast episode. But first, let's get into the science segment, and I'm excited because so much happened in space. Space, space, space. While we were doing spooky science, I just basically put together a recap of some of the coolest stuff that happened, and here's that. Uh, science! Hey guys, welcome to Science This Week. Last month, I had a ton of fun dissecting the science behind some of the most iconic themes surrounding Halloween. Ghosts, witches, and Frankenstein's monster. But there was a lot that happened within our favorite topic, space and space exploration. And I thought this week I would briefly touch upon some of the more exciting news to come out of space. First up, speaking of Halloween, NASA shared some spooky images for the season. Uh, From their Twitter, actually, they wrote, when we peer deep into space, we don't expect to find something staring back at us. This photo, this galactic ghoul, as it's being called, was captured actually by the NASA Hubble Hubble telescope and is really a head-on collision between two galaxies. The entire system in the photo by Hubble is named ARP Mador 2026 424, that wonderful scientific name. Each eye shows the core of a galaxy after it's slammed into the other, and the outline consists of young blue stars, at least that's what NASA says. NASA says the, ph- the photographed phenomenon is actually very rare. Galaxies collide often, but not head-on, and rarely do ring galaxies form. In about one to two billion years, the two galaxies' merger will finalize. Next, a carved-out cloud of gas and dust looks like a celestial jack-o'-lantern in this image from NASA's Spitzer Space Telescope. A massive star known as an O-type star and about 15 to 20 times heavier than the sun is likely responsible for sculpting this cosmic pumpkin. 
A recent study of the region suggests that the powerful outflow of radiation and particles from the star likely swept the surrounding dust and gas outward, creating deep gouges in this cloud, which is known as a nebula. Spitzer, which detects infrared life, saw the star glowing like a candle at the center of a hollowed-out pumpkin. The study's authors have fittingly nicknamed the structure the Jack-O-Lantern Nebula. Finally, this photo shows active regions of the sun that combine to look like something of a jack-o'-lantern's face, and this is from 2014. But NASA reshared this for this Halloween season. The active regions appear brighter because those are areas that emit more light and energy, markers of an intense and complex set of magnetic fields hovering in the sun's atmosphere, the corona, as NASA wrote. Now, let's check in what's happening on the surface of the red planet. A brand new selfie taken by Mars' Curiosity rover is absolutely breathtaking. Stitched together from 57 individual images taken by a camera on the end of Curiosity's robotic arm, the panorama also commemorates only the second time the rover has performed a special chemistry experiment. This selfie was taken on October 11th, 2019, in a location named the Glen Ative, which is part of the Clay Bearing Unit, a region the team has eagerly awaited reaching since before Curiosity even launched. You can see just to the left of the rover in this image released by NASA, two holes Curiosity drilled, named Glen Et Etiv 1 on the right and Glen Etiv 2 on the left. The rover can analyze the chemical composition of rock samples by powderizing them with a drill, then dropping the samples into a portable lab in its belly called Sample Analysis at Mars, or SAM. Clay-based rocks are good at preserving chemical compounds, which break down over time and when bombarded by radiation from space and the sun. The science team is therefore really intrigued to see which organic compounds, if any, have been preserved in the rocks at Glen Etev. Understanding how this area formed will give them a better idea of just how the Martian climate was changing billions of years ago. The results from this study will be known next year. Astronomers have made some exciting discoveries about Saturn, and that planet has now overtaken Jupiter as our solar system's satellite king. Astronomers just discovered 20 previously unknown Saturn's moons, boosting the ringed planet's tally of known satellites to 82, three more than that of Jupiter. And there's even more exciting news. You can help name these newfound objects. I'll put the link in this show, but if you just want to Google name Saturn's moons, you can go on over to carnegiescience.edu and help name those moons. All 20 moons are tiny, measuring about three miles across. 17 of them have retrograde orbits, and this means that they move around Saturn in the opposite direction to the planet's rotation. These 17 all take more than three Earth years to complete one lap around Saturn, and the most far-flung one is the most distant Saturn satellite even known. Scott Shepard of the Carnegie Institution for Science in Washington, D.C. said this kind of grouping of outer moons is also seen around Jupiter, indicating violent collisions occurred between moons in the Saturnine system or with outside objects such as passing asteroids or comets. Using some of the largest telescopes in the world, we are now completing the inventory of small moons around the giant planets. They play a crucial role in helping us determine how our solar system's planets formed and evolved. For example, the newfound moon's existence suggests that the impacts that created them occurred after Saturn was fully formed. The gas giant was surrounded by a disk of dust and gas as it was taking shape. If these tiny moons had to plow through all that material on their way around Saturn, friction would have sapped their speed and sent them spiraling into the planet. Next up, new spacesuits have finally been revealed from NASA that will be the ones worn by the astronauts as part of the Artemis mission, our mission to Moon and then to Mars. When astronauts are hours away from launching on Artemis missions to the Moon, they'll put on these brightly colored orange spacesuits called the Orion Crew Survival System, or OSCC suit. It is designed for a custom fit and equipped with safety technology and mobility features to help protect astronauts on launch day in emergency situations, high-risk parts of missions near the moon, and during the high-speed return to Earth. 
While shuttle era spacesuits came in off the shelf sizes like small, medium, and large, the Orion suits will be custom fit for each crew member and accommodate astronauts of all sizes. Even though it's primarily designed for launch and reentry, the Orion suit can keep astronauts alive if Orion were to lose cabin pressure during the journey out to the moon while adjusting orbits and gateway or on the way back home. Astronauts could potentially survive inside the suit for up to six days as they make their way back to Earth. These will pair with a separate suit designed specifically for prolonged exposure outside in space. Speaking of spacesuits, NASA reached a milestone when two American astronauts ventured out of the International Space Station to perform a spacewalk and replace a failed power controller. The astronauts, Christina Cook and Jessica Meir, were the first to take part in an all-woman spacewalk. Video footage from the astronauts' helmet cameras as they dangled 260 miles above Earth provided a live stream of the painstaking operation to carry the new hardware, install it, and then return the faulty battery to the airlock for a post-mortem back on Earth into why it failed. Speaking on an all-female spacewalk, this was bound to happen because of the increasing number of female astronauts. And at the end of the day, they are all just astronauts, but this milestone shouldn't be looked upon lightly or with PC culture ire and disdain. Women were not admitted into the astronaut program until 1978, and an American woman did not fly into space until Sally Ride did it in 1983. Two Soviet women actually preceded her. The first spacewalk took place in 1965, but in 1984, Catherine Sullivan became the first American woman to perform one. Of the more than 560 people who have been in space around the world, only 65 have been women. Christina Cook is due to remain on the ISS until February, bringing her total time in space to 328 days, the longest single spaceflight by a woman, and just short of Scott Kelly's titanic 340-day record. Researchers are collecting extensive biomedical data on the impact of spaceflight on Cook's body. The bodies of men and women differ, and this is something that not only needs to be studied on Earth, but in space as well. A uh, perfect example is that men and women's bodies sweat differently. And when you're on a spacewalk, a spacesuit is specifically designed to maintain the body's temperature at safe levels. And this is with cooling and ventilation within the suit. But this was designed specifically for the male body. This is something that is being addressed with the new Artemis designs and beyond with space exploration. And it is really interesting as we find out more about the physiology and what happens to everybody's body with prolonged time in space. So starting next week, I'll be bringing you a multi-part series on the science of humanity in space. I hope to do an in-depth look at how humans exist in space and go through the science of the space suit, the spacewalk or EVA, the space station itself, and the various rovers and vehicles that humanity has used and will be using in the emptiness of space. So I can't wait for you guys to join me on that journey starting next week right here on the science segment on Fueled by DeathCast. So much cool stuff happened Space. in the last month. Yeah. I really love doing the spooky science segments that we did, that three-part mini-series. If you missed those, those are still available on YouTube, The Science of Ghosts, The Science of Witches, and The Science of Frankenstein's Monster. Um, but, yeah, you know I love to talk about everything that happens in space. And, he oh, does. Man, it was so cool. I thought, first of all, um, the the photos that NASA released, the spooky galaxy and the sun looking like a jack-o'-lantern. I told you spooky space. Spooky space. Really, really cool. In fact, <laughs> I got to shout out Jesse on on YouTube said, uh, you know, like, we're all carving pumpkins on Earth, and uh, and Space was like, wait, hold my beer. <laughs> hold my beer. <laughs> like, let me be way more spooky, oh, which is gosh. rad. Um, uh, also, all the moons that they found around Saturn. Holy crap. Like We should name a moon. 20 new moons. Nicholas, uh, over on Facebook, you asked about the, the link again. Um, it's uh, carnegiescience.edu. 
Um, but if you just literally Google name Saturn's moons, it's like the first or second Google hit. You'll see it. You have till December 6th, I think, to submit a name. You can also do it on Twitter. Um, and hashtag name Saturn's moons, I believe, is the hashtag. So it's pretty easy to do. Uh, I hope one of you guys actually names one of Saturn's moons. And then we can send Jeff to it. Yeah. So now the possibility of sending you to the moon can technically mean a yes. lot Jeff on the moon. of things. Hashtag Jeff, Jeff on, the on moon. 20 moons. <laughs> Jeff on 20 moons. Jeff the moon. <laughs> we can <laughs> name the moon Jeff and then send you to it. Ah, oh. I like it. I like it. Over Get a on, GoFundMe going. Um, Twitch, actually, <laughs> Shrader Rabba. I always get your name wrong. I'm sorry. But you said that Saturn's moons might be good for mining. And uh, that is something that we've been thinking about, actually. And it's really cool. There's another mission that's going to be happening, I believe, next. No, I believe 2021 or 2022. It's called Lucy. And we're sending a satellite to a lot of the moons in Jupiter to literally be an archaeologist huh. and mine these moons, which is going to be really, Moon really mining. cool. So uh, definitely look up that kind of stuff. And I'm really excited for that new series starting next week. I'm going to do the Science of Humanity in Space. Um, I'm hoping to make it a four-part series. It's a little nerve-wracking when I say that I'm going to do things before I've actually made them. <laughs> now you're so, committed. So it's like I'm committed now. So you guys, you guys got to hold me to it, and I want to make it happen. Um, but I'm really excited about it. And I do want to, before I keep going, I do want to just say something um, that's been pissing me off lately. This is like a mini, Hot take. a mini roast here, a mini grind my gears. Mini grind my gears. At the end of that segment, I was talking about how historic it was that uh, we had the first all-female spacewalk and Woo! how amazing it was that Christina and Jessica, um, those amazing astronauts, did that. And at the end of the day, like I said in that segment, yes, they are just astronauts. Everyone in up there is just astronauts. But, again, like I said, out of the 560-plus people who consider themselves to be astronauts who have went to space in the history of humanity, only 65 of them have been women. And I've been seeing a lot of stuff on the Internet of people, like, lashing out at that and being like, well, we shouldn't have to, we shouldn't have to celebrate the – everybody's an astronaut. Why are, we, why are we spending time and energy celebrating – these achievements of women when we've already gotten past that and everybody has equal rights. And I think that's fucking bullshit. I really do. Um, the Hot first take. woman on the moon is going to be on the moon in 2024, and that's going to be an achievement. The first time that we ever had two astronauts out of the International Space Station floating in space that were both women, that was historic. And we should be celebrating it. Yes, women, we should. Women have had a really tough time obviously in the military and that leads into even being in as an astronaut like i said in 1983 sally ride was the first woman ever to be in space as a nasa astronaut and do you know what the men actually asked her do you know the the story of sally ride no. so the me so all of the men that you know obviously ran nasa at the time when sally went through all of the training and all everything that she was doing they asked her they were like look we want to make sure you have enough provisions. Is 100 tampons enough? Oh, my. Okay, like, seriously. And then they, they, they doubled down and said, we have to make room in the provisions so she can have a makeup kit, oh which she violently God. denied and said she had no want to have up there because she had enough to do on the International Space Station as a scientist right. and an astronaut. Who cares about putting on makeup? This is this was the man mentality. And again, I'm not trying to really go into that whole feminist thing. It's just been bothering me that I've been seeing a lot, even on NASA forums, of people getting mad about us getting excited about a historic event. Like two women going outside of the space station for almost seven hours and performing a spacewalk. That's awesome. That is really awesome. We should be celebrating that more. I agree with you, Jeff. I'm just, I, I, I just had to get that off my chest. Do you feel better? I do. Good. I feel a little bit better. Good. Yes. Um, so let's keep going on the show. Um, like I love to do every single week is feature one of you out there in internet land. And, um, you know, because we're all brought together by our love of Death Wish Coffee. And I get to feature one of you on the Death Star of the Week. Woo! And this week is really special because it's the first time we've ever had a death star from twitch yeah and i see you in those comments Twitchy. i know you're there so if you guys have never met 
Oblivion Shadow. You're going to meet her right now. Good, good. It is a fully operational Death Star of the Week. Welcome to the Death Star of the Week. Uh, and I really want to welcome you, Oblivion Shadow, because you are my first Death Star from the Twitch universe. So congratulations on that. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I'm going to start this like I always do. I got to know, when did you first hear about Death Wish Coffee, either the coffee or the company? Do you remember what year that was? It was 2014. I was in high school, and I think I found it from thisiswhyimbroke.com. Nice. Honestly, um, I ended up picking up some of the coffee, and it was the first time in my life that I was able to drink coffee straight black, and I've been drinking straight black coffee ever since. We're, before discovering the coffee when you were in high school, were you drinking coffee a lot? Yeah, I drank coffee since I was like 11 or 12. Nice, nice. Start them young. <laughs> that's what I always say. Um, <clears throat> so that's great. So then after discovering Death Wish, and even before that, what is your go-to brewing method? What's your go-to way of getting your, your caffeine fix? Um, back in high school and prior to that when I was drinking coffee, it was always just a regular drip maker. Since finding Death Wish, I've experimented with French press, I have a Chemex now. I have a Ninja coffee system, so it can do like espresso and stuff. I have an espresso machine. Like I've got like just about everything except for an AeroPress, I think, and that's on my list. Oh, that's awesome! That is awesome. <laughs> so, um, on the other side, before I get into uh, the normal questions, I gotta ask because um, I met you first actually watching the show on Twitch, and now Deathwish Coffee is doing a lot more on Twitch. I, I assume that you're a big gamer. Um, for the most part, yeah. I've fallen off in the last couple of years, but usually I am massively into games, anime, all sorts of that nerdy stuff. Excellent, excellent. You'll fit right in here. Um, your go to uh, your go to game? Uh, probably the Legend of Zelda series. Anything from that is just. It's it's been my childhood. Ditto, ditto. In fact, I'll I'll, uh, I'll make the connection even stronger. My wife and I both have um, the only matching tattoos that we have are the three hearts that you start at the beginning of Zelda. That's awesome. Yeah, um, that's really rad. And I'm sure Deathwish Coffee helps caffeinate you through late nights of gaming and that kind of. Oh thing. yeah, uh, <laughs> it's powered uh, randomly decided and mine's like 12 and 24 hour live streams. It's the only way we get through. That's awesome. That is awesome. So the other side of it, then I always ask, you know, like we love making a good cup of coffee, but we also love making stuff that it goes into. Do you collect any of the mugs from Deathwish Coffee? Uh, yeah, this is my collection. Holy moly, look at that. That's awesome. You've got some really good ones in there. So do you remember maybe the first mug that you got from Deathwish? Yeah, um, it was in 2014. I got it shortly after my first cup of coffee, and it's this set in the middle right there, the sugar canister in wow, the cup. Wow, you are lucky. That is a highly sought-after one. Even myself included would love to own that someday. That is awesome. So do you have a favorite in your collection? Um, I have categories of favorites. I so love my it. favorite glaze is the space mug by far. That is so beautiful. My favorite medallion is tied between the Friday the thirteenth mug and the Harvester of Souls mug. And then like I don't know. I think my overall favorite would be my first mug just because it's what got me started. Excellent. Yeah, of course, of course. So that's so rad. So then the final question I got to get to, you've been a fan of the company since 2014. You've seen us do all sorts of different things. You've seen us go to space. You've seen us, you know, all the different pieces of merchandise that we make and, and have come out with. Is there anything that we haven't tried that you'd like to see us try? Um, I think a lot of people would love to have like pet accessories that are Death Wish themed. And then I'd love to see like a dragon or a wolf themed mug. Ooh. Honestly. Ooh. Okay. I'll comment on both of those. First of all, on a dragon and a wolf, we both talked about both of those um, in random meetings before. It's an idea that we we've kicked around. In fact, um, uh, Zach Wild, being such a huge fan of the Viking culture and Odin and all that stuff, loves all of the wolves, and that's all connected into that. So we've kicked that idea around a lot. So you might see that in the future for sure. Um, and dragons are awesome, so you know that would be great to do as well. 
And the pet theme thing. Yes, <laughs> so many people bring that up. Um, we just want to make a good product. A lot of uh, companies that we've looked into doing, like maybe collars or, or dog tags or, or, you know, pet tags or something like that, a lot of it's cheap and a lot of it is, you know, like we really want to, we pride ourselves on making really good products no matter what we do. So it is something we're actively looking to do and it will definitely be something we do. We just want to make the right fit for what we do. And uh, I got to ask then to, 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 to finish up here, Speaking of pets, who can can we introduce who this is who's been here the whole time? <laughs> <laughs> this is Sebastian. He's my little adorable floof. Aw, hello, Sebastian. Well, now we get to break the internet because the internet loves nothing more than coffee and cats, if I know, if I know the internet. He tries to steal my Death Wish coffee. <laughs> that's adorable. So he's a fan, too. That is adorable. Well, that's great. Well, that's great. Well, the Oblivion Shadow, I cannot thank you s enough for being on the Death Star segment. It was a pleasure talking with you. You too. Excellent, excellent. That kitty is so cute. <laughs> That old time Janet's is watching it, just be like, kitty cat, meow, 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 meow. <laughs> so cute. Uh, it was really great talking to you, Oblivion Shadow. We'll and see you in the comment like comments. Like I say all the time, if any of you guys want to be a Death Star of the Week, hit up Fueled by Deathcast on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. Direct message the page and let me know you want to do it, and we'll figure it out. We'll, yeah. We'll make it happen. Um, and... Uh, I love doing those. It was a lot of fun. But, yeah, you know, I got to say, because cause she's in the comments on Twitch, uh, Oblivion Shadow, um, that was a great segment. But, um, you know, and if this goes to show for any of you guys and gals out there, you put your cat on there, they're going to steal the show. <laughs> Ask Monday Night Football. Ask Monday Night Football, right? Jeez. Like, <laughs> <laughs> kitties. Oh, man. So uh, this week on the podcast, which comes out tomorrow, everywhere podcasts are found, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Music, iHeartRadio, and right here on the Death Wish Coffee Company YouTube page, um, we come out with a brand new episode every Thursday. I love doing these, and I love doing these because this is another employee episode. Yay! I love doing the employee episodes because I learn more about the employees that I work with and you guys get to learn more about what it's like working at Death Wish and what makes up the people who actually work at Death Wish. And uh, this one was really cool because I got to talk with Adam Ballard. And Adam uh, started out a couple years ago on the production floor and now since has graduated to roasting. And that was something he did, and I didn't know this until I was talking to him, that he did on his own. I thought he got kind of like brought into that fold. He got that initiative and was like, I want to learn how to roast, and now since has, and has been roasting there some of the goes. very coffee that you guys have been drinking, which is really, really cool to think about. And we talk about all that, but Adam and I love to nerd out. He's a huge fantasy fan. We He's talk, a huge nerd. Huge nerd. We <laughs> talk about Star Wars. We talk about Game of Thrones. We talk about all that kind of stuff. And we talk about the Death Wish Coffee Company Ping Pong League. And if you guys don't know what the hell I'm talking about, you better tune in live on Facebook on Friday during our lunchtime. The guys over in production ha get pretty heated over uh, over their ping pong league, and I've been I've been living I've been uh, Facebook living it, which is you might uh, recognize Adam because he was one of the highlighted matches. He was, and he, he lost. Oh, Jesus, <laughs> he did. <laughs> he did, but I mean, okay, okay. Um, I gotta put him on blast. But anyway. Uh, I want you guys to get a sneak peek of tomorrow's episode with Adam, and this is a really cool segment where he's talking about how he got into roasting the very coffee that all you guys love. And here's that. Fuel by Deathcast. You didn't come in knowing how to roast, right? Are you learning no, that on the floor? Not at all. Yeah. Um, I've been roasting. I've been here for like two and a half years almost, half but years. I've only been roasting since like February. Wow. I was just like, I want to learn how to do it. Let's let's go. Okay, let me ask this question then, and I kind of know the answer, but for our our listeners and 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 viewers out there, um, is it really open like that on the floor? Like, if you want to learn a new skill, yeah. can you just kind of do that? Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, as long as everything... I mean, for the most part, they're really cool about, like, if you're really interested in something, for the most part, like, they'll... Everyone will do everything to help you along to get so awesome. to where you want to be. That's, yeah. wh- that's why I love this company. What what drew you to roasting? Why were you interested in it in the first place? Um, I liked a lot of it. I I liked being involved with like I wanted to like be part of making it. You know, okay, that's a big thing is being able to actually like create it, right? The product and roasting's cool too because like it's a huge you've seen it you know yeah. it's that huge awesome machine and it's just fun to be able to like you know be down there and you're it's you in the machine and it's i like i like working alone like that that's cool that's cool and i mean like you know to give a little bit of history of this company like when it started you know and it was just mike and john swedish like john was predominantly the one you know running our the tiniest roaster ever when before yeah. we ever had you know you know, quality stuff like we have now. And then it turned into Dave, who is now a master roaster. You know, he's went through that whole training and he trained Anthony and now it's basically Dave and Anthony and you. And that's pretty much it, right? No, actually, well, it's, yeah, it's Dave, Tony, uh, John Wilson. He's been doing it uh, longer than me. And I actually, like, Wilson helps me out a lot. Like, That's awesome. I still, uh, I still always is masking for help all the time with different things okay so and then it's and then uh, then i started and now joe's actually been doing it a lot really yeah wow that's so we got a little we got a little roasting squad now it's awesome it's really cool especially with a company like this for to have that many people who are not only interested in it but want to learn that kind of skill because it is exactly what you said creating the product you're taking that green coffee bean and turning it into what eventually is death wish coffee 100 percent what is what would you say is the hardest obstacle to either learn or get used to with roasting coffee especially on this level on on, a, on such a large scale um i would say the hardest part the for me the hardest part of getting used to everything was getting used to the machine itself mm-hmm. and how quirky they can be sometimes and how you really have to stay on top of it and you like not become part of the machine but like you get really in tuned with how that thing runs and you know what goes wrong with it and troubleshooting that's cool and i didn't know this until i started working in the coffee industry what's one of the things that you know boggles my mind so much is that you know obviously coffee has a different profile depending on the bean that you use depending on the the region of the world that you're getting that bean from the soil that it's grown in and that kind of thing but when you're talking about roasting the smallest hundredth of a degree sometimes can actually change that profile right yeah it doesn't take much to change it i've had when i was first starting out i had something went on the roaster where i had a fault and uh it stayed in for like an extra like 30 40 seconds longer than it was supposed to at the end and just that was enough where it was like ah all right batch is ruined like wow it's not death wish anymore it's something else it's you know wow. so you gotta really you gotta be on top of it as best you can of course of course because i mean we obviously pride ourselves on the world's strongest coffee and we want yeah. that 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 consistent product but then you're also roasting Valhalla java for father zach and making sure that that oh, is yeah. the same profile all the time and we have now in the last few years put into normal yearly rotation like our barrel brands our pumpkin coffee you know and that's all different probably roasting techniques with those too right yeah um yeah there's just extra steps with those flavored ones yeah a lot of like work that goes into to that that's a fun process though i mean you've been roasting now for six months so that means that means that you know i as we're as this episode is airing we're gearing up to release a fan favorite the chocolate rum ball so that means Mm. you were had a hand in roasting some of that too right i didn't get to roast the rum ball Uh, i think that i don't know all to himself (laughs) I don't know <laughs> if I wasn't there that day or if that was when I was on vacation. I don't know. But I did get to do the pumpkin, and that oh, was really fun. That's awesome. Yeah, that was like my first different uh, one to make. Oh, that's really cool.
Man, I'm a dummy. <laughs> I put the wrong end tag on there. Tomorrow okay. it is episode 151 with Adam Ballard. That'll Woo! be deathwishcoffee.com slash Adam. That'll be available right on deathwishcoffee.com slash Adam. Also, Deathcast and also wherever podcasts are found. I hope you guys tune in. We had a lot of fun talking. Um, I did want to mention uh, a couple comments I saw over on Twitch. Dreadwolf, you said uh, roasting isn't just set it and forget it. That's what oh, I thought, too. Yeah, it's I always crazy. thought it was. I always thought it was just like, okay, you put it in the roaster, you hit roast, and there it goes. And No, it's it's insane the amount of actual science that goes into roasting. And yeah. just like you have to be so particular with when you're doing stuff. Like you can't leave a roast in for an extra even two seconds it can mess it up it's crazy. like a whole roast or if the machine malfunctions or something it's crazy it's absolutely a lot of stress crazy. it is a lot of stress and he talks a little bit more about that too which is really cool um also uh i, I know this got answered by adam but over on youtube dj pork chop was asking, um, do we roast Valhalla in-house too? We roast all of our blends in-house. So Deathwish Coffee, Valhalla Java, our pumpkin cauldron age blend, and then all of our barrel blends. We do all of that in-house blend blends. <laughs> our barrel blends. Um, also, most of the coffee that is made for Saratoga Coffee Traders, we roast that as well. So if you guys are ever in Saratoga Springs, New York, and you want to see where Deathwish started. You can't because it's in the basement and no one's allowed in the basement of Saratoga Coffee Tree. Because it's dangerous. But you can Danger. see you can see the first floor where the coffee shop is. <laughs> and you can get a cup of Deathwish coffee as well. Um, so yeah, please tune in tomorrow. I also did see a couple other comments. Uh, I'm so excited that you guys really like ping pong. Yeah. Um, that's really fun. Uh, like I said, the guys at the production love ping pong every single Friday until the, the league is done. I'm going to be live streaming that just on death wish coffee, Facebook. I can't simulcast that cause I'm just doing that off my phone on our lunch break. Um, I, they basically play matches during their lunches all week long, but on Friday they hold the featured match. And that's the one that we give to all of you guys as well. So tune in. And uh, we'll all have a lot of fun every single Friday. It's usually 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is lunchtime. How long uh, is the league going on for? I don't know. Forever. 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 I just don't know. Um, also, I do want to mention, I saw a couple comments uh, pop up on multiples of this. I love it when you guys are eagle-eyed and looking at the shelf behind us. And a couple of the comments were about the mug that uh, the Joker and Batman are hugging back there, and it looks like there's some craziness happening behind it. Um, the mug that uh, is on the top shelf up there that Joker and Batman are, are flanking, that is our Daddy Bear mug from about four years ago now. And uh, behind it is a tiny little cane bear. It's a little Aww. stuffed, a little stuffed teddy bear that we, um, that we definitely. What um, happened to all the cane bears? I don't know what happened to all the cane bears, but one of them's up there. And then on top of his head is a bat, is a little um, uh, rubber bat huh. that was from our Halloween show. We were because, whacking them you know, I'm always adding to this thing, and I'm always switching it around and stuff like that. So I just want to let you guys know one last time. You guys are all joining in. You guys are all in the comments, which is really, really awesome. One lucky comment on every single platform will be picked to win a Das Horn. Facebook and Twitch we will announce as soon as we sign off tonight. And one lucky winner will win on YouTube and we'll say your name right before we sign off. Yes. But we have a lot to get to right now because there's so much coming out from Deathwish Coffee in November. And we wanted to feature all of it tonight for you guys because we already did in the blog in the scoop. We Do you did. read the blog? If you don't read the blog, get reading the blog. Thank you. Yeah. For coming you, to my TED Talk. <laughs> yes. If, do you subscribe to the scoop? If you don't subscribe to the scoop, what the hell are you doing? You're missing the scoop. You're missing the scoop. We love putting out the scoop every single Monday. It is an awesome, awesome email, chock full of all the content we make here at Death Wish Coffee. And uh, the first Monday of every month, we've been doing a blog about everything that comes out that month. Mwahaha. So if you guys read that blog, you know what we're going to start talking about. But tomorrow, we got something awesome coming out tomorrow. It's coming out tomorrow. 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 Boom. It's the on-the-go kit. I've got the mug cam up and going. Let's see if we can make it happen. Wait, wait, wait. Here we go. Okay. 
Wow. Look at that guy. Look at that guy. This beautiful canvas bag. You get this beautiful canvas bag, and then you want to open it up? Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Oh, What's in here? So in the, in the canvas bag itself, you get two, two enamel mugs. Perfect for, for camping. Beautiful, guys. Yeah, and then 10, a pack of 10, single serve, pour over um, packs. And they kind of look like this. Yeah. Get out of here. Yeah. Like this little guy. And I got we put together a video actually just today to uh, kind of walk you guys through. And this will be available on the site tomorrow when these, when these are available. So it's kind of like a little instructional video to show you what how cool this product is. And we'll show you that right now. So, if you guys noticed, we learned something since we did this on the show. We did we did this wrong the first time we tried this. So let's see if I can if I can show you here on the mug cam. Womp. All right. So basically, this is the little pack, right? And it looks like this. You're gonna get ten of these in your pack, okay? And you're gonna have these little handles that come out. Now, when we did this on the show a couple weeks ago, we pulled the handles out like this and kind of put them on the cup. I didn't know that there's actual perforations Little on these handles guys. that bend them out and then make it so they'll literally anchor to any cup, any okay. cup you want. You can, and I mean, look, yeah, we're pushing down on this, so you much be able to better throw it than up. when we did it. Yeah, we 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 did our. T that's why we test it for you guys. That's Don't why we be do like it. Jeff or Shannon. Yeah, um, but follow we're, the instructions. <laughs> we're really excited about this. This is so much better than a K cup. It's so much better than you know for the environment. This is completely biodegradable, um, and it packs right up in this this awesome bag. You can use this bag for anything, really. You don't have to use it for just for the coffee kit, but it is really cool that with the coffee kit you get ten single serve pour overs, um, and then the two the two mugs. And I love I love. This logo. This logo is like my new favorite logo. I messed it up a little bit. All right, do it again. Here. Look at that. Ah, God, I love that logo. Thomas did a great job. He really did. Per usual. It's so cool. It's so cool. So tomorrow on DeathWishCoffee.com, this will be available. Go get it. Yeah, go get it. And if it sells well, guys, we really hope that you guys like it. What we do, this is the deal. We want you guys to buy it, try it, and review it because we want to know if you like it. It's a new way of a pour over coffee. We're really excited to be a part of it. Um, and if you do like it, what we're hoping to do is sell the packs, you know, in, ten, in packs of 10, packs of 50, like we do K cups. Yep. You know, like we want to make this a mainstay product. Yeah, basically. really a we mainstay like product, to. which would be amazing. And you guys can go get um, our Death Wish kettle on our site as well. And uh, you have the whole kit. Right Precise there. pour. Precise pour. Please. So we're really excited about that. That's coming out tomorrow. Woo! You guys want to know what else is coming out? Not tomorrow. But this is coming out very soon. Da -da. You guys are really excited. You guys loved what we came out with for Halloween, right? The Halloween mug. The Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde dual medallion mug. One of my favorite mugs we've done this year. 100%. Oh, so beautiful. Yeah. Um, but. But. You know we always do one around the Thanksgiving time. Kablam. Look at Kablam. that. Kablam. Mug cam. All right, mug cam. Wham. Look at that guy. Oh, God. Valkyrie and Thor mug. Valkyrie and On Thor mug. On a hammer mug. mug. 
How yeah. fitting is that? It's not, this 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 style of mug is literally called the hammer. The hammer. Yeah. And uh, um, we are so excited to release a Valkyrie and Thor mug. We've been listening to you guys. You know, a lot of you have been saying, we want more women on mugs. And a lot of you guys have been saying, we want more Viking stuff on mugs. And so what's the, most badass, what's the most badass Viking woman there is? It's freaking Valkyrie. The artwork on this, again, is knocked right out of the park. Yeah. So detailed. So I know amazing. it's kind of hard to see the super fine details on this mug, but just like the Jekyll and Hyde mug, every time you look at it, you find something new. Just screenshot this and then and then zoom in, zoom in on it. You can really you can really see. You can't read anymore. Yeah, you can really see how amazing that is, man. I'm so excited. So for anybody who's new out there in Internet Land, this is how it works. Very very soon, this mug is gonna have a golden ticket release. Now what What's that means that? <laughs> is when that when that happens. Every single order placed on DeathWishCoffee.com on the day of the golden ticket will have a chance to win a variant of this mug. The mug you see before you will have a different glaze. We usually do about 20 of these mugs. So 20 random orders will get a variant of this mug. We don't and know what that mug looks like yet. Have you seen it? No, I haven't seen it. I have no idea what color it is. But every order placed on that day will get a patch. And that patch will be the medallion that you see with Thor and Valkyrie on it, which is really rad. That golden ticket day is coming up very soon next week. And so you're definitely going to want to, you know, subscribe to The Scoop, subscribe to the newsletter, keep watching the show, because we will let you know when the golden ticket day is coming <coughs> as soon week. as we can, because we can't now, but it could be <coughs> next week. And we'll just, like, just stay tuned for that. But usually after the golden ticket, about a week or two later, the full release of the mug happens. <laughs> but the coolest thing about that is if you guys are a subscriber – to Death Wish Coffee, not the newsletter, to the coffee itself. If you get a subscription of coffee, whether it's Death Wish or Valhalla or the cold brew delivered to your door every couple weeks or every month, however you want to set it up, you get day early access to our mug release. So Say what? So if a mug comes out on a Tuesday, you get access to it on a Monday. If it comes out on a Friday, you get access to it on a Thursday. So you definitely want to become a subscriber because you get that perk. You get a ton of um, other perks like free discount of coffee, discount of coffee, so much cool stuff. But that's coming up very soon. We're really excited for this mug, and I'm also gonna I'm gonna end talking about this mug by saying I have seen a bunch of comments. This is not our Christmas mug. Nope. Here, I'm gonna Just gonna leave that one there because we got a Christmas mug coming. That up. one's coming around the corner. You guys are definitely gonna want to know what that is. Ooh. We're not going to tell you yet. Um, another amazing product we're really excited to come out with. It was oh, one of man. those ideas that we said in the office, like, wouldn't it be funny if we did this? Blank. You and know? guess what? We doing it. And I'm so happy about it. We are coming out with a robe and slippers. Robe and slippers. Look at these guys. These are perfect, like, house shoes and i'm gonna wear them all winter long and in the office actually can't get in it what can't get oh in it. jeff can't get in the robe this robe has a hood first off very important to notice is a super that super soft plush material that's super warm for the winter has our logo stitched on it you can pretend to be a zombie it has pockets You kind of look like a Dementor. Or just dementor. demented. This is like the perfect robe to <laughs> sit in on your couch, drink coffee, and when it's negative 10 degrees outside, which we know is coming very soon. It's so freaking comfortable. Um, the slippers are well made. They've got traction on the bottom. They do. So you can go outside and get the paper in the snow if you and need to. You don't to. have to worry about... Like falling down the driveway like that viral d video did last and year. And this is like, I don't even know, like... I forget what the material is, but it's that super oh, soft... So soft. It feels like a kitty cat. It doesn't... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's so great. And this is going to be coming out very soon. And what's really cool is... Um, now, correct me if I'm wrong. We're not doing this as a set. We are doing... We're technically doing it as a set, but you have the ability... 
to to mix and match, right? I think so. I I don't know if they're also going to be sold separately as products too. I think the logistics of this is still being figured out. What we want to do is is we want to make sure that you get the size robe that you want and also the size slippers that you want. You know, like we don't want to like sell like a medium robe and medium slippers, you know, and like obviously like maybe, you know, your feet are smaller or you're taller or something like that. So we we're working really hard that you're going to be able to you know, get the robe and slippers together or separately the way that you're going to want them. Right. And holy crap, I'm hot. It's so hot. It's so hot. I'm just hot. But we're really excited. That's coming up very, very, very soon. And something else that we're really excited about, and I don't know if this is going to show up, but we're going to try. Let's go to the mug cam. Wow. wow. All right. Oh, it does show up. Look at that. Dun 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 Holy crap, we're so excited about this. We've been listening to you guys and this we know that this is one of your favorite old school medallions. Can we, can we get it? Can, can, it's it's hard. It's it's not focusing. It's stainless steel and it is a Christmas ornament. And what better Christmas ornament? What old school Christmas ornament would make the best one ever, it's the Yeti. Of course, it's the Yeti. We're so excited about this. This will be coming out in November as well, so you'll be able to get it well in advance before Christmas season, so you'll be able to decorate with it as well. I can't wait to put one on my tree. Same. We actually have a tree up in the office right now because we're doing, for the fourth year in a row, Toys for Toga, which we're very excited about. Yay. It's like Toys for Tots, but it's a very localized thing because we're really proud of the community that we're part of and uh we definitely have one of those on our tree right for now, sure which is really rad and if you're local to the capital region area come on in uh with a new unwrapped toy or if you're driving through come in too and you will get a free one pound bag of death wish coffee so we're trying to collect more than two thousand toys this year we collected 1200 last year we want to knock that goal out of the park this year and give the kids of saratoga county a really good holiday season yeah so there's so your if psa you're, if you're for that. local like, help us out. But, man, that's going to be a lot of fun to release that. So that's coming out very soon as well. And the final thing I wanted to show you guys is another piece of apparel that we're really excited about because a couple years back, and you guys, if you guys are part of the official Death Wish Coffee Company community page over on Facebook, Woo! you probably have seen some of the people who have been fans of the company for years who were lucky enough to get the original Death Wish Coffee ugly sweater. Yeah. And uh, it really was ugly. We did our best to make it ugly, and we did our best to make a good one, and it didn't come out the greatest. The sizing was terrible. Sizing I, on this one is much better. The sizing on the one I'm about to show you is much better, but the original, I have one. I'll probably wear one on in the show later as we as we get closer to Christmas. Um, but um, my the one I have is like the normal size of a sweater I'd wear. It's like a medium or whatever, but it's like an extra large. It's like... I go like this in the in the in the sleeves. But we tried and we learned our lesson and this year we came out with what we're calling an ugly sweater. But it's really not that ugly. I don't think it's ugly. It's beautiful. Yay. This is our new ugly sweater. Or not ugly sweater. I don't know what to call it. But this also has our logo on it, little tiny trees, some reindeer, some skulls, a chain, and Krampus at the bottom. Krampus! It's a Krampus sweater! And same thing on the back. Blam. Heck yeah, and the sleeves. I didn't notice the sleeves. Yep. There's Krampus on the sleeves. Yep. What size are you holding right and, now? And coffee beans and all sorts of stuff. This is a large. So, so this is I a large a, sweater. I would take a smaller one than this. I'd take a medium probably. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Heck yeah. So that will be coming out again in November, so you guys will be able to get it before Christmas. Now, a lot of you guys are asking, when is all this stuff going to come out? We're going to pace it throughout the, the, the month. Pace yourselves. But if you are shoppers and you live in the world, you know that a big weekend, there's right? a big shopping week at the end of November, and we're probably going to come out with some of this stuff around then. And we're probably going to come out with some stuff that we haven't even freaking told you about. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Always yeah. something up our sleeves here. It's <laughs> so exciting. I'm so excited 
for all the stuff that's coming out. Um, and I hope you guys are too. I really am because uh, we really do enjoy making what we get to make here and uh, doing what we get to do. And um, it's it's fun because, like, you know, I love the, the normal stuff we do. Like, we're always making, you know, T-shirts or, or hats or, or, you know, like the staples. Um, and uh, when we get to do fun random things like pool floats and robes and slippers you know it's just it's it's pretty great um i am so excited that you guys tuned in to the show tonight yeah um it was a little weird to get back into it but we're back into it we're we're doing it no more spookiness no more well we'll keep we'll we'll try to keep bringing it's always spooky um like i said don't forget to tune in to the podcast next next to next day tomorrow next day <laughs> day next then you guys can hear more from adam ballard our incredible roaster and self-proclaimed ping pong champion of the world <laughs> um which is pretty funny and um uh, also uh you know a brand new science segment coming out this sunday and then next week starts that four-part science series about the science of humanity in space i'm very excited to get started on that um and thank you guys so much for watching. We're going to announce Das Horn winners for Facebook and Twitch when we sign off. But over on YouTube, the winner of the Das Horn is Sandy Dunham. Yay, Congrat Das champion! Congratulations, Sandy Dunham. You are our YouTube winner. If you can hit up Death Wish Coffee, either a DM us on any social media, on Instagram or on Facebook or Twitter or something like that, or hit up hey, H-E-Y, at deathwishcoffee.com hey. and let us know your details. We'll get a Das Horn right out to you. Stay tuned on Facebook and Twitch. I'll get those winners in the comments as soon as we sign off. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back next week. And don't forget, Friday, tune in for Ping Pong League. Woo, Ping Pong! And winners of our contest at 3 p.m. <sighs> Goodbye, everybody. Bye! Bye! Bye.